Okay, Leo. This is the Three of Swords, and it is exactly what it looks like. Um, it's a pain in the heart. This can be from a betrayal within a lover relationship. It can be a betrayal of any kind of relationship. It um, Something that stuck you in the heart. It also can mean grieving for someone who has passed away or someone has just trans transitioned into death. So it looks like some things were coming are coming up for you from the past, Leo, that make you a little heart sick. It also can represent distance from a lover if you are not uh, together or it's not possible to be together. So it can be um, a lover from the past that you are not allowed to be with either on the physical plane or the emotional plane. So it looks like that's something you're processing. What crosses you is the judgment. Judging yourself on whether, you know, I shouldn't be grieving, I shouldn't be feeling this way, or that love is gone, um, um, or I can't make those changes. So being in judgment of yourself this is what I'm feeling of. So don't be so harsh on yourself, Leo. You know, we all learn at our own pace. Um, and love is something that can stay in your heart forever from lifetime to lifetime. So um, don't be so hard on yourself on where you think you should be and where you are. Um, so that is what crosses you. The hangman is what is above you. And the hangman is like, you're living life, but you're looking at it completely differently. It's like when you're playing checkers and you start out as the red men. And all of a sudden, halfway through the game, you turn that checkerboard around and you are the black men. It is the same game, but it looks completely different to you. So something within you has shifted a perspective either on work or love or how life should be or where you think you should be. So it's, it's a perspective and it feels like it's a little bit less judgmental than where you have been in the past. So you have either incorporated some kindness some forgiveness, maybe a little more patience with others at work or something like that. But um, you have had a big shift. So, um, and it looks like it's going to continue for you, um, that you'll get more information and shift a little bit more and be a little less judgmental on yourself and others. The moon is what's standing um, in in the past position, this could have been something that you just had an aha moment about or just started to incorporate into your daily life. And the moon um, is an intrinsic thing. It is. It also can stand for a cancer person, but um, I'm feeling this is more your internalized things. It feels like you're being, you, you've shifted your perspective uh, internally a bit, uh, lightened up a little bit, being kinder to yourself. Also putting some of your hopes, dreams, desires, wishes um, to the forefront. And instead of putting everybody else else's desires in front, you are now um, making yourself a priority. And the moon basically it takes internal things and kind of projects them into the physical world, into the physical world. So um, you may be creating, you know, the five-year plan, what you really, what you want it to look like and getting started on it. So it feels like you're on the path to making these changes, lightened up a little bit on expectations and judgment, and you're kind of going Going with the flow a little bit more, but you're also bringing some deep things from the inside to the outside, whether it's speaking your truth to your lover, your friends, um, but making you and your desires a little bit more of a priority. It's not hanging in the dark so much. It's coming to the forefront. Here's the page of wands in the current position and pages can be messages and wands usually depict action and movement. Um, this want, messages of wands are important messages and they can mean work or international travel. It could be a job opportunity. It could be a, you know, just getting honored for the hard work that you've done. So pay attention to your mail, your email, uh, messages that people send to you. Um, so it looks like some good news is coming your way and it's an important good news and it feels like it might be about work, either a new position or a position 
position at a different company, but um, it does feel like it encourages move, movement and transition from where you are now. Uh, the King of Cups, that's an exalted one. Usually it's somebody over 30 or 40 if it depicts a person. Can be a man. I don't like to put a gender on, on cards, but it's usually someone who has great moral integrity. Um, it will be a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. So it could be someone that you uh, hold in high regard, someone that is in touch with their emotions. Uh, water signs are very emotional, usually in touch with them. Um, and if it's, it's presenting as a king, it's somebody who takes the moral high ground. So it may be someone that you either need to ask advice or someone that that you are doing business with, uh, someone that you are creating a change with. Um, it could be a life partner as well for, um, uh, I would say, female or gay Leos. Um, it, but it is someone of great importance in your life that you hold in high regard. So it's like having a conversation to uh, clarify some of the changes that you want to make is what it's feeling like. Little advice from someone you trust. Um, and someone that takes the moral high ground that wouldn't steer you wrong. Someone who's got your back. Um, the magician is here at the basis of, of all this. And this is really getting in touch with your magic and connecting with the God of your heart, or the spirit of your heart. And for those that are not religious, however that looks for you, you know, if, um, if, Going out for a walk is uh, your way of connecting with the planet and connecting with your spirit. Then I encourage you to do that. But it looks like really up in your game spiritually. So for those of you that, you know, read spiritual books and it's just kind of an external thing, it looks like you'll incorporate these, these uh, practices more often. Uh, hopefully on a daily basis, whether it's prayer or meditation or yoga or walking, but making a commitment to your internal growth. And it looks like you're exploring some of the reasons why you're here on the planet and what you want that to look like in the future, how um, you want to get in touch with the more positive side of your life and clear out some of the um, negative either behaviors or desires, things that don't work for you anymore. So it looks like you're currently in the transition of really looking at what's important with no judgment, releasing the things that don't work for you and walking into um, the things that, that do work for you and exploring new ways of connecting with spirit. Um, and for many of you, it may be teaching. It may be taking a class on meditation. There are many ways to do this or reading a self-help book, but it's you it's, it's really about you expanding your awareness of spirit and why we're here, what your lessons are. So um, the nine is here in the next position. And this is one where when you're thinking too much and you can't sleep or you have too many problems hanging over your head and when you're looking at the big picture and it looks so big and unattainable that it just kind of brings in some grief and remorse. Um, but if you take each each one of these challenges one at a time and until completion or release them. Um, it will be much easier on your spirit. It'll be much easier on your body, but it does look like it's standing in the way of your sleeping habits. It could mean either sleeping too much, not sleeping enough, um, nightmares, uh, interrupted sleep, things like this, but there's there's something that's laying too heavy on your mind. So it's time to put some of those plans in motion or release them if they are not in line with your growth right now. You can always recreate them at another time, but if they're just hanging there in the distance and there's something that you're unable to uh, rectify right now, then it's just renting space in your head and, and causing dis-ease in your body. So release some of those those uh, fears, release some of the um, self-imposed rules that do not work for you anymore and kind of lighten your load a little bit so you will be available to create your magic. So it does look at it stands in the way, the negative stands in the way of keeping your mindset positive. So release what you can while you can. The fool is here and that's upside down. That usually means taking a leap of faith, trying something new, also not making foolish 
uh, choices, having foolish choices that you've done before. So it looks like something has come up that has come up from the past. Could be with work, could be with a friendship that didn't work. And there's a revisitation. The devil is right here. So in, it, it could be an addiction. It could be um, a test if you're trying to get sober. It could be um, if you're trying to leave a job. It could be somebody dangling some a raise in your face to get you to stay. But it's a temptation and it really isn't in line. So if it's something that you already released, continue to release it even if it feels really good or it looks really good. Or there's a promise of some payoff that feels like jive, that feels like it's a hook to get you to stay in that perpetual place of either overworking or um, not growing, not growing and not advancing. So um, be aware that uh, if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. And the devil is here, so it can be addiction. Um, it could be um, a lover that you let go that's kind of coming back into your awareness. And you know it didn't work, so follow your heart. If it didn't work the last couple of times, it's most likely not going to work this time. So it's just a test to see if you pass and if you're really committed to your new state of mind, your new hangman place, your new epiphanies, and your commitment to make those changes. The Queen of Wands is here. This feels like it's an adversary, um, that it is... Um, I'm picking up something. Sorry. I'm picking up something. The Queen of Wands is a fire sign. That's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But it looks like something that you need to um, straighten out. That it feels like there was a miscommunication. Um, the devil is on the side of here. So it does feel like, you know, there was a lot of static happening when Mercury was retrograde last month. So you may need to apologize for something that you didn't realize. Or there may need to be amends made uh, for this person or to this person. Again, that's fire, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. It's someone of wisdom, someone that is of uh, importance in your life, um, but it looks like there's a little distance and a little static that needs to be cleared up uh, between this person. And it's usually someone of great wisdom or someone over 30. Um, if they are younger than 30, they have great wisdom. Here is the two on the other side for clarity. This is finding your balance, choosing your battles, um, creating your future. It can mean traveling to a foreign land. It does feel like water is involved. Um, this key is lighting up, so it may be uh, connected with family legacy. This may be going to visit family members overseas. This may be making the pilgrimage to the old country, but it's um, setting your priorities and your goals for the future, um, releasing the things that don't really work for you anymore. Um, it does look like you're holding on to them just in case things change. Mm, let them go. Let them go. Open up the channel for new magic to come in. And I think you'll see the path a little clearer for you, but it does feel like there was some confusion on which way to go. Some of the things that you put your energy and time and money into um, the last couple of months did not come to fruition. There was always more than one road to um, to the journey. So uh, open your mind, open your heart to other ways of achieving um, the goals that you have set up for yourself or tweaking the goals a little bit, releasing the things that really don't work and creating new things. But it's something towards your future and open up your awareness to be a little broader rather than, oh, I just want to um, do this one thing in this one town let the world be your oyster. What if you got a wonderful job opportunity in France or, or United Arab Emirates or South America? So broaden your, your scope of receiving. Don't, um, file it down to just this thing. And if just this thing doesn't happen, then I'm a failure or it didn't work. So open up your desires, open up your awareness and your receiving to a much broader scope, kind of a global scope, not just your town, not just your state or your country. So that is a reading for the month of May, dear Leo. I'm going to throw a couple of these cards. These are chakra cards. 
And they're pretty clear, even though they have just one word on them, it's pretty clear grief, okay? And the grief card was here as well. So it's time to really release some of the pain and the grief from, from things that happened in the past that you had no control over. Grief stands in the way of your abundance. It stands in the way of your magic. And it kind of um, tags in on the fear stuff. Um, growth. Now it's time to grow. The time to grow for you. These are both green, so they are both um, the basics, the um, um, the lower level things. It's time to grow out of your preconceived ideas and the judgment you have for yourself and others, and to really allow your wings to spread. You are growing, um, and you've changed your perspective. So have the courage to keep growing and to jump into your fear so you can fly very high.